Welcome to PHT in the Morning with your host, Pastor David Miller from the Pentecostal Holiness Tabernacle in Cincinnati, Ohio. Good morning and welcome to another episode of PHT in the Morning with Pastor David Miller. And I will be your host today. And we want to thank you for coming back and listening again with us on PHT in the morning. Our last uh, two episodes, we talked to you about uh, two episodes ago about that feeling of being overwhelmed. And then our last episode, we talked to you about feeling like you were an outcast. Now, what we're going to be talking to you about this morning is not the same, but it is similar. And in that, we talked about being an outcast that some people felt that way because of their sinful past. That was one of the points. But what I'm going to talk to you about today, and I'll just go ahead and give you the title of our Uh, episode this morning. I'm going to be talking to you about your past, his power, your praise. And I'm going to talk to you today about not letting our past circumstances keep us from knowing the Lord and giving our heart to God because of maybe our past. I want to direct your attention here, if I may, to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 6, and verse number 9. Verse 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So I'm, I'm going to stop right here at the end of verse 10 for right now, and we'll give you verse 11 in a few moments, but I want to, I want to say, first of all, that, you know, I, these are not my words. I did not write these words down. These words are not from the organization I belong to. They are not from the fellowship, ministerial fellowship I'm a part of, although we do believe this, but these words are right out of the Bible, of which I believe is God's holy and divine word. So, all of those things mentioned are God's words, not my opinion or your opinion. So, I feel like when it comes to God's word, I don't have an opinion. God's word is right every time. And I'll just mention again quickly the things he said you cannot do and inherit the kingdom of God or, in layman's terms, expect to go to heaven someday. They were, if we were fornicators, idolaters or idol worshipers, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind, Thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners. He said none of those was going to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, I could give you a little breakdown of of, uh, kind of what these things mean. Like uh, fornicators is to have... Uh, sexual activity outside of marriage 
or idolaters to worship uh, false gods. Uh, and you say, well, what would that be? I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I believe if you worship any other idol, be it a statue or a self-proclaimed God or anything else, that that would be idolatry. Uh, adulterers, male or female, that is having uh, sexual activity outside of their husband or wife. Effeminate, which would be a male <clears throat> or a man that had um, a lifestyle or actions that was not masculine. Abusers of themselves with mankind. Like the scripture said in one place, they left the natural use of the body and burned within their own lust. So, like I said, this is God's word. Nor thieves. So if you're a thief, if you're taking things that is not yours, uh, even if you look, you could be like a, a guy I heard say one time, well, they really won't miss it. They don't need it, and I do. But if it's not yours and you take it, that is stealing. So he said, or covetous. That means to uh, desire and want and think about something someone else has, and you want that wrongfully for yourself or drunkards, whether that be on uh, alcohol uh, primarily is what it means, or revilers to revel and revile and go against and uh, others, extortioners, if you would extort monies. He said, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God, or in other words, in layman's terms, you can't go to heaven. So these are things that God's word says. But I don't want you to be too discouraged because yet, I want you to hear the rest of the podcast. These are things that was the first part of what I told you we'd be dealing with in this session. That is your past. So maybe you've been guilty of one, two, or all of these things. I'm not saying that that's okay. I am saying, though, that was your past. You might be like a man that I heard the story of. I didn't know him, but I knew a lot of people that did know him. He lived around the Richlands, Virginia area, and he had been a uh, homeless person, and he was quite sinful as well, I hear. And one day, he walked in the church, and he asked God to forgive him and save him, and he did. God forgave him. After that, the church helped him get a job and uh, found him a place where he could live and stay. He cleaned up. They bought him some clothes. And someone came by, and he had a nickname that was not a good nickname. I won't even call it. Someone hollered out and called that nickname. He did not answer. They yelled that nickname out again to him, and he did not answer. They walked over to him and said, hey, do you think you're better than us? He said, no, sir. And they asked him, then why didn't you answer when we yelled out your name, he said, because I'm not the same man that I was. And I thank God for that story, which is a true story. When the Lord forgives us and saves us, don't call a person a thief after he was saved. If God forgives him or a fornicator or an idolater or an adulterer, if God forgives them, uh, it doesn't matter what they've done. It's what they are doing. That was their past. And I ask you and implore you today, 
Uh, if God can leave it in their past, I pray that you would leave it in, in their past and not always go up trying to dig up everybody's past. I like what one man said. This is not scriptural, but I like what he said. He said, I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, when the Lord saves someone and their sins are cast into the sea of forgetfulness, he said, God puts up a no fishing sign. Now, the Bible don't say that, but I kind of like that story. Don't go trying to fish them back out. That was the past. Now, let's look at verse 11 of 1 Corinthians 6. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. So this morning I ask you that are listening today, I mentioned the past, now we're talking about the power I don't have power to forgive a man of his sins. I recently had someone got saved at my church and they came up to me and said, thank you for saving me. This was just not long ago. And I had to tell that person, I did not save you. Jesus did. I just led you in prayer and helped you pray. So I just, I just want to say this. He said, some of you were that. You were these things, but you were washed. So what is that? You were cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are sanctified. Sanctified means set apart. So when you get cleansed by the blood, you're set apart from those things of your past. You don't do them anymore. You stop those things because you're a new creature in Christ. So you're set apart or sanctified, and you are justified. So for all of you constantly bringing up people's past, do you not read verse 11 that said they are now justified? Like one man said, it's just as if I'd never done it. I'm telling you, people may remember your past, but when the Lord forgives you, he never brings it up again. Thank God for the power that God has to forgive our sins and correct our past and give us a new and a bright future. I'm thankful for that. Well, those are the first two points I had. And thirdly, I want to talk to you now about your praise. Don't you think... As much as God has done for us, for me, for you, you may look and say, Pastor Miller, I never done any of those things that you mentioned. Well, maybe you didn't, but even if you didn't commit one of those sins, every one of us, when we come to that knowledge of the truth, to realize we're a sinner, if it's no more than the sin of omission, Every one of us, we must repent. We must ask forgiveness and ask God to forgive us and save us of our sins. So after this happens, I believe we ought to be showing forth praises and glorifying God for what he has done for us. I personally am eternally grateful for the salvation that the Lord Jesus uh, gave to me. Now, I was a young man when I got saved, but I was definitely a sinner. I didn't do, uh, I don't know if I'd done any of these things here, but I done, I definitely sinned. Many times I did. But even as a young man, God forgave me, and I remember the night I got saved, all I wanted to do was rejoice and thank God for the joy that was in my heart. You know, when you get saved, you will usually, or I've, everyone I've ever talked to feels a great joy. You know, uh, uh, two weeks ago on Sunday morning, we had a, a young man 
that got saved in our church. That next day, that young man came to my house, knocked on the door. I opened the door and he just hugged my neck. And he said, yesterday was the greatest day of my life. A few days later, I saw that same man. He came over to me and he said, I just feel like a, a huge weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. He said, I felt so burdened down. But he said, now I feel so good. He said, I'm just happy. I'm happy. And tears ran down this uh, young man's face as he was telling me of the joy that he felt in his heart. So I believe we ought to be lifting up our hands in praises to God for God's power to forgive our past. You need to be worshiping God. You need to be praising God. We need to be grateful. You know, we are Pentecostal folks and uh, our services are not like a lot of other churches. We had a, a, a man come into our church, I don't know, maybe four or five months ago, and we just had a normal service. It was not really very, a lot of enthusiasm in that service. Not a lot of shouting, not a lot of rejoicing. But he wasn't used to a Pentecostals. He'd never been in a Pentecostal church. He came up to me and he said, I love this church because you're so lively. And I couldn't help but laugh. He said, what's well, funny? I said, keep coming back if you want to see lively. And, and he came back every week for, I don't know, maybe I'm going to guess four months. And don't you know, yesterday morning, on Sunday morning, he walked down the aisle, that same man, gave his heart to Jesus and become a Christian. And I asked him, how do you feel? And he said, I feel great. I'm very happy. I feel happy. I never put those words in his mouth. That was his word. So our church services are usually pretty lively. We believe in lifting our hands and uh, giving a praise to God. We believe in shouting like the Bible said. We believe in worship and we're worshiping our God. So you know, it wouldn't hurt you right now. Now, if you're driving down the road and listening, please don't do this. But if you are where, to where that you can and God has forgive you of a tattered past or a terrible past by his great power, and I reminded you of what you were and now what you are, I think it'd be a great idea if you lift a hand and just praise God for what he done for you that you or no one else could have done for yourself. I think it's best said by a song that I've heard uh, many groups sing. They sing it at our church. They do really well at our church. But I've heard one of the pastor's uh, friends that I know, his family, the Don Ingram family, and they, they sing it so good. And they sing a song that says, don't you think you ought to worship him? So I just want to close by saying this. If God has washed, forgiven, sanctified, and justified you from a sinful past, don't you think you ought to worship him? Worship the Lord Jesus and he's worthy of your praise. He's deserving of your praise. So give God this morning your highest and your best praise. This is Pastor Miller. I hope you've enjoyed this session and you join back with us the next time. And I pray that you have a great rest of your day.